Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we'll take a quick look at basic poly painting in ZBrush. Uh, and this actually applies to whatever version of ZBrush you're using. Uh, this is one of the models I like to play with uh, when I'm showing students how to do some poly painting. I use that. I also use this was one that I actually used for a separate 3D motive tutorial. Then I've got a funny model that I actually ha used for a student project. Uh, we were teaching uh, cartoon modeling. So it was a fun little character, not overly complicated. So the paint job was a completely different style, obviously. And we also have a basketball player, a, caricat a caricatured basketball player. This was something I also used for another 3D Motive Tips and Tricks tutorial. But as you can see, uh, from far away, painting obviously looks like just solid colors. But as you get close, you can see that there's actually a lot of detail in how you set up the colors, the coloring, the details, and things like that. Okay, all right, it works for all of them. Uh, these models are different scales, so you'll have to forgive. I'll have to zoom in and out as it goes, but that's okay. Again, this was a cartoon model. Again, painting uh, emphasizes certain features without going overboard with the details because this is a pretty simple character. If we had a lot of different things working on this character. Uh, it'd probably look too busy overall more than anything. This demon character uh, was a quick Dynamesh bust. It was, I think, about an hour, hour and a half uh, Dynamesh practice. Uh, the poly painting was about the same. I think it took about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, again, it looks good close up, and it look good, looks good from far away. It's, it's a bunch of different colors that blend in to help give a certain look give it a certain flavoring. I actually painted in it looks like it is you know is being backlit but I actually painted in all of that to give it that underlying uh, in hell kind of look you know with some some flames in the back so it stood out a little bit. And then obviously with the uh, this particular orc head by the way I'm pushing F to uh, frame the head when I do that uh, zoomed in really quickly F frames everything. I'm also rotating with my left mouse and I'm panning with left alt and zooming in with right alt okay but this like this particular orc head uh, for the tutorial I did a tutorial series it's got some really good uh, flavoring to it some really good colors to it it complements everything but of course, with this particular this skin skin shade material built within uh, ZBrush, it looks really nice. It gives it a good skin, etc. But as I teach my students, it isn't the material. This particular material, for the most part, isn't what's going to sell your model. It's going to be your paint job on your model that's going to make it work. Now, right now, I'm in the preview. That's that's how this looks. This is our. Uh, preview mode in the viewport so it looks really nice it will change if I change to a different material obviously it's going to change to uh, change on the model itself it's a reflective uh, actually I should have another one this is an old skin material from a, a colleague of mine go back to the skin shade but if you don't uh, the, the thing is, is is with poly painting if you don't have good paint details putting on a really good material isn't going to make your model look good um, because you understand that these materials often aren't going to be what's translated and exported with your texture um, also with this particular material uh, it might look good in this particular viewport but if this was actually cooked into this texture and then we put different lighting on it in, in game in, in different uh, game engines it may not give us the results we want so it's best not to have a material built in just make sure we have really good color but if I go to my render and go to the flat shade you can see if I zoom in everything that's painted it's not just that this this orc head was just green 
I didn't paint just a green color for a base. I painted several layers upon layers of different greens, yellow greens. I have some bluish green tints in here. Uh, I got a little coloring in for the moles or the zits or whatever you'd like to call them. I have several different colors in for the bottom lip. Uh, for the tongue, there were several different colors, several different layers of that. Same if I go to the demon head, hit F to frame it. Oops, I'm sorry. There we go. You can see that this is the flat painted view of the model. So you can see there's a lot of work done for painting this to give it that certain styling that and all the colors and everything. I, I've always told my students, you you know, it, it's really great to put down a base color, but if that's all you're going to do your model, it's not going to really stand out. You need to learn where to help it along, help your model along by painting in some shadowing, painting in some highlights. Not that you have to go to the extremes of it because obviously uh, when your model gets into the engine, that's what the whole point of uh, the engine. The engine will have lighting on it that will help accentuate those shadows and highlights. But it's best to try and get some of that painted into your model. The more detail you can put into your textures and you can paint into your textures is the better your model is going to look overall uh, when it's in game. If I go to the basketball player, as you can see, uh, for the basketball player, uh, the, he has a face that looks pretty splotchy. If you zoom in, there, he's got a lot of splotchiness to his skin, but that was what I painted in because again, based on whatever engine was going to, it was going to run, you were going to make sure that that was going to help sell itself as what skin would look like because skin itself, human skin, or if you want to look, call it orc skin or alien skin, is never just a flat color. It's it's a smattering of colors. It's it's a blending of many shades of the same thing, but nothing's ever consistent. Same with this, this simple caveman. It, it was a base color that I started with, but then I painted many layers of different uh, colorings and, and different tones of that color to get the overall look. I added in some shading, blended in some darker tones, etc., where, where I knew it was going to help emphasize certain aspects of the model. As you can see, I even put in a lot of darker tones and some dirtiness in the hands. It only helps to complement your model in the long run, again, uh, when, you, when you paint really good, detailed um, um, textures because this will be going on your model even for this log I mean this was a cartoon character but even for the log you can see there are sh several shades of some brown tones there's some darker tones there's some lighter tones there's even some yellowing in the top here as you can see there's some orange and yellows and things like that it just helps the character overall uh, materials alone by and large, you're not going to be exporting those with your textures. So if if you have a nice uh, paint job on your model, then it's only going to help when you actually get into what could be what your game engine might be doing to your model. Like it, maybe your your particular game engine will make your model look like this, and maybe you can turn around and give it some more spec, etc. On it, you know, uh, it's it's only going to help rather than hurt you. And it'll also get you used to painting and, and what goes into painting really good skins. Again, you can see this is all, there's a lot of splotchiness in here, a lot of color in here, but nothing's consistent insofar as it's not just a solid color. Uh, it's a blend of different colors. So what we're gonna do in this little tutorial is I'm gonna show you just some basic things for the poly painting that'll help give you a good jump when you go for exploring and, and pushing your skills in poly painting in ZBrush. Okay, we need to switch to uh, just something simple. I'm going to switch back into our preview. Let's go ahead and start with just a sphere. It's a, uh, it's, it's a poly sphere. We're going to go ahead and click this button really quickly. Make poly mesh 3D. There we go. If I hit shift F shows shows our uh, polygon distribution. We're going to go ahead and hit Control D, Control D. We're going to amp up the polygon count. And we'll go Control D one more time. So it's about 525,000 polys. That's fine. Shift F to turn the polyframe back off. 
Okay, I like to start with a white material on the model when I'm first working on it. Uh, you need to apply a material first to it or a color to it first or it's not going to work. In other words, if I change to my red wax, it's going to change to red wax. If I go to just, uh, this is an MAH modeling, it's kind of just like a white blanket piece, uh, blank piece of paper. If I go to my RGB and hit color, fill object, that's now filled. If I change my material now, it affects it, but the color I can now change, and it doesn't matter what the color is, because I have basically put white on this particular, uh, the color white onto this particular ball. Now, I actually like to use this uh, particular color, and I actually like to do an MRGB, which is material and color, just so I've got it flushed. Oops, sorry. Let's just make sure we're in all white. Okay. All right, and you can see it just changing the subtool. So it's got both material and color on it. All right. I'm now just going to switch to RGB. I'm going to switch to my freehand. Make sure you go to your stroke. Use the mouse average. Turn it all the way up to 15 so it's smooth, and then turn off your lazy mouse. All right, let's just show you the quick, easy way to do these, uh, do poly painting. I'm gonna. I picked a green color. I'm now gonna. I'm using my brackets key to scale up the brush size on the fly. I'm just gonna mix in some color. Okay. There we go. That was that green color. All right. Now I can move to a different color, a darker color. And if I paint in over it. I get a nice clear delineated line. However, if I don't want it to be quite that deli uh, that clear cut, I can pull down the intensity. That way, when I go over it, I can get a nice blend. Okay, so that's one way to do something like that. Okay, uh, on the fly, by the way, if you if I want to sample a particular color, let me put that back in there, and I want to sample you know, some diff, uh, different shades of green, all you have to do is hold your C key. That'll actually change the color right here. If you'll notice, C, and it got dark, you can do it over here, C, because the white was a color, it'll actually sh uh, change that. You can also switch your colors at any time on these colors here by hitting your V key, because you can do different colors. When you, when you do skins, I like to use uh, the color spray, and I like to use a nice, like, Alpha 7 or Alpha 8. 7 works for this. Let's do a quickie. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and f go color, fill object. Now it didn't fill it in and didn't get it dark because again we hadn't changed the RGB. We have to take it back up to 100. Color, fill object. Okay, so our whole object is now this particular green color. All right. I'm going to now switch to say a red color. Okay, I've got this on. But I, I want two different shades of the red. I want a light red or this medium red. And I want to get a dark red. So I'm going to hold down my V key and I'm now going to do red and shift it down. So it's light and dark. Okay. And it'll sample from this. In other words, if I start to paint first, it'll go light and there's a background of dark. So I'm going to hit my V key to shift it. And now it's light with a dark interlay. See that? This is a great way to do skins. This is a great way to do a whole lot of things, just painting in softly. It also depends on how hard you're you're using uh, the pressure on this object. If I put in a, a really steep, hard pressure, obviously it makes it really solid really fast. And you can still see how speckled it is, okay? If I just glance it on, you can actually layer in colors this way by just slowly building it up. Okay. Also, it's a great thing to, to learn is, you know, have an idea of where your shadowing is on your model, where you'd like to have certain effects for it. Uh, if you want some lighter colors at the top, let's say, let's just turn it over here. Let's shift back. We're going to hit C to select this one green, and we're going to then hit V to switch. I'm going to hit C again. I want these supposed to be the same greens. I'm going to shift this one up a little bit so it's a lighter color. And now as I just slowly sprinkle some of this on, you can see I'm getting a lighter tone up here. Okay. I can now switch this to a darker green, say. And I can layer that in down here. 
you just slowly blending it. I'm going to now hit V to switch it, so I've got my main color again, and I'll just kind of pull that in the middle a little bit and blend that in. Okay. This is a great way to do skins. I, I almost always use the colors, uh, the the color spray, and then um, Alpha Seven right here. It's good for pores. I find it's a great way to do skins, etc. It's also a great way to just learn how to do um, some really good highlights and shadowing effects, etc. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to color and fill this object again. One last quick little thing. Again, what you can do, let's, if you want to do solid colors, I'm just turning off my alpha and going into freehand. I'm going to switch the color, or again, it's just V, or switch this color here. Let's say you get a hard streak there. If you hold down your shift, you can actually blend that edge. Do you see that? So you can blend that. The same way you, you use shift to smooth some of the details when you're sculpting in ZBrush, you can actually smooth the edges out pretty nicely over there. It's really great. So you can that's a nice way to turn around and get certain looks too as you blend things in, even with solid colors. But I would suggest you you play with the sampling as you're working it. Again, I can get right in the middle here and hit a C and now I've got something that's between the, the what was light and what was dark. And I can I can blend that in now too. And then I can hold shift and blend that out a little bit too. But now that has painted, if I go to my render to the flat, you can see what's actually been painted. You've got a dark color, you've got a uh, light color, and you can actually see a mid color here. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it's a great way to uh, start with your poly painting, a great, great little introduction, I hope. And I hope you guys had fun with this. This has been 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells.